Oh, hello, Mr. TFI guy. You look somewhat disheveled, unlike death warmed up. Oh, why, thank you. Allow me to provide you with an amusing anecdote which will somewhat validate and confirm your accurate observation. You know when your neighbour buys a car and you just know the person who bought that car originally spec'd the optional extra mucho grande hi-fi audio upgrade. And then, and then, at three o'clock in the morning, for some unknown godly reason, their car decides to turn its stereo on all by itself with the doors locked, so you can't leave your house at three in the morning, open the car and smash their stereo to pieces. No, no. It plays its stereo at three o'clock in the morning at full volume, so loud that I can hear it through my bedroom window, every single sumptuous bass note through the bedroom window. Over the sound of my own headphones, I can hear this car stereo. That, that is what this looks like. And therefore, if this video goes tits up balls to the wall, you know why. You know why. Anyway, do you like my wallpaper? I did it myself. That's an inventor render, would you know? <laughs> it really is. Alright, what we're doing today? We're doing the Inventor SDK. What's the SDK? It's short for the Software Development Kit. The best way I can sort of explain and describe these uh, this SDK... With AutoCAD, right, most of you, I guess, have had some form of involvement or uh, exposure to AutoCAD in the past. AutoCAD has Express Tools. And Express Tools are kind of like bonus utilities which Autodesk give you with AutoCAD. And they say they're not really part of AutoCAD, except they are, because they've been in AutoCAD since Cat was a kitten. But they say, here's your Express Tools. They're not supported, but everybody kind of relies on them. You know, hardcore AutoCAD users kind of rely on them. And they're, they're a set of utilities which is which have been created by the actual developers of AutoCAD. So the developers of AutoCAD, they do their day job during the day. They go home and instead of banging their wives and playing with their children, they'll... That sounded wrong. I didn't mean it like that, obviously. No disrespect intended at all to the AutoCAD developers. My excuse is you saw me at the start of this video. But they will, instead of instead of doing the normal things that you do as, a, as an adult, they will code and write programs and they wrote the express tools. And then they, they said, here they are, here, here's, your, here's your express tools, do with them what you will. If you want to use them, use them, if not, nothing lost. So we have a similar thing with Inventor. We have the SDK, which is like Inventor's express tools. So moving on, how do you get to them? Right, they should be ready on your PC for you to activate. All you've got to do is go to your C drive, you go to users, you go to public, you go to public documents, you go to Autodesk 2016 Inventor, and then SDK, it's in there. Right, I've already installed and that's why you see this folder. So make sure you have Inventor closed. You've got to shut Inventor down at this point. And then double click user tools, and then you should get this. I've already installed it, hence why I see this. You just want to click next, 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 next. And then that should install this folder here in the same area as the user tools dot e file. Double click user tools and you should see half a dozen or so folders. Right, I'm obviously not going to go through uh, all of these because most of them, uh, well, most of them, there's only six of them, but I'd say about three or four of them are quite useful. The other ones are kind of like meh, meh. I'm saying meh, it's just I haven't really looked at them yet, but on face value, they don't look like I would be that much interested in them. So I'm going to concentrate on the color scheme editor, that's a thing. Copy design, that's a thing. And drawing tools, that's a thing. So we look at those. And they're not installed yet. All, all this has done so far is pretty much just extracted them. So you want to go to drawing tools, for example. You want to go to the bin folder, and then you want to double click this. Now, I've had some issues with Windows 10. And uh, the, the guy who's uh, who reminded me that these existed, hi Chris, hi, I've had bother with Windows 10, it's a pain in the ass. I haven't hassled you because they, they're not support, I can't be bothered if I'm, <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't care enough <laughs> to hassle you about them. But what I did, I, 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 I did this, I, I double clicked that, that's it installed and then I booted up Inventor, there's nothing there, didn't work. So I tried registering DLLs, I tried doing all sorts of things and I just... Uh, you, you've seen the clip of his man. I, I probably should have just done it in the first place. But all you've got to do is just reboot your computer. <laughs> That's it. So you just double click that, reboot your computer, and it worked. What didn't work, though, what didn't work, and this is uh, for the benefit of everyone else watching this, is the, the general tools. The general tools, if you go into the readme, it adds a check spelling command, which I'm fine with not having because I've been able to spell for the last year or so. So I'm fine with not having check spelling. And then we've also got a variable, variable pitch helix command. 
and I can again do without that. So I'm not too fussed about that. However, this one just flat out did not work. Double click in the XE just does nothing. Trying to manually register the DLL doesn't work. It just flat out wouldn't work on Windows 10. It might work on other operating systems, but Windows 10, it just flat out would not work. So that's a thing. And the other ones uh, that I have tried did work. Anyway, right, so what you want to do, you want to double click drawntools.exe, which has uh, been uh, registered drawntools.exe. Double click that, reboot your PC, and then fire up Inventor. And it will, as long as it's worked, it puts a new ribbon panel into your drawing environment. So you want to go to new, you want to go to uh, standard DWG or IDW, and then, as if by as if by voodoo, hocus pocus, and magic, the fucking audience has gone. Ah. And we're back, I had to do a reboot. Thanks Autodesk, thank you for that. No idea why, I did this five minutes ago and it worked just fine, then it vanished and I had to reboot. Great, happy days, what a great day I'm having. <laughs> How was your day? Anyway, right, so what you get is if by magic. <laughs> You get the add-ins tab, there you go, and there's your drawing tools tab. Right, so you get presented with four buttons. The four buttons, uh, I have no idea what this one does, I haven't played around with it yet. There's no tool tips on that like that here, so uh, I have no idea what this one does, but it doesn't look like something which I would use all that lot, all that lot, all that much. Uh, but Chain Dimension, Alpha Sort, Sheets and Revision Cloud are quite useful, I suppose. Right, Chain Dimension. I suppose I need a drawn view. Uh, to show any benefits of the chain dimension. Let's put this on here. Oh, that was quite good, didn't it? Lots of things that dimension on there. I don't care about vault. Not today. No, thank you. Right. So you go to uh, you go to add-ins, then you go to chain dimension. So this little express tool allows you to create dimensions. So you do that. You just click from there to there, and then you go like this, and there's your first dimension. And then you say, well, now I want one from there to there. And it goes, boosh. And then there to there. Boosh. Look at that. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? And it just automatically aligns all your dimensions together uh, like that, like that. So it's nothing you couldn't have done already by yourself. I mean, off memory, I think. Uh, this is, it, yeah, since I've done drawings, I don't do proper work. But off memory, don't you go to uh, arrange and then select all of them like that and then say, OK, yeah, you do. So that that's a thing. That's a thing. So it's not it's not massively, you know, it's not going to shake your world and uh, set your, your your world on fire. But it's it's mildly useful, I'd say. All right. So that's chain dimensions, right? We've also got alpha sort sheets, right? What alpha sort sheets does is it's only really useful if you've got a drawing with multiple sheets in here. So like for example, if this sheet was uh, sheet A, and then you've got like. Uh, can I, I can't, I can't do multiple sheets, you've got to do them one by one, haven't you? Mm. Right, so you've got A, then you've got like G, and then you've got, uh, I don't know, K, uh, L, and you get the point, don't you? Z, right, oh, if I press enter, I didn't know that, look at that. It's repeating the last command, I didn't know you could do that. Tips and tricks, on the fly, freestyling, y'all. Freestyle and right. So what you do is you click Alpha Sort Sheets, and it will it will it will, it will arrange. Have I all, I've all, I just I've already done that straight away. It's just not working. It's just not working. So what I'm going to do is shut this drawing down. Didn't I not just say save it? There we go. And then I'm going to reopen it back up. If I can find the damn thing, there it is. Uh, oh look at that! It's completely rearranged. A bug caught on the fly. How would you like that? Right, so what you do is you go to add-ins and you click alpha sort sheets, whoosh, and it'll rearrange all your sheets alphabetically or numerically, but you can see they're not brilliant. These tools aren't splendid by any stretch of the imagination. They will be buggy and don't expect much help on them. Like I said, they are not supported. They're just take them or leave them type tools. And then the final one is the revision cloud. So this is something which inventors, I have no idea why it's even an express tool. You'd think a revision cloud is something which would be Hey, I'm having a great day. My phone just rang and interrupted me mid-flow. <sighs> right, what was I doing? Revision Cloud, yes. You'd think it would be in Inventor by default because it's one of those things that you'd think everyone would have a use for, but no, it's just one of these express tools. So what you do, you just click Revision Cloud and then you just go like this. You just click the view and then you just circle the mouse around. Click, 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 and then click. Right click, finish the cloud, and then there's your revision cloud. It appears in the browser as a little doobly what's it. And that's pretty much it. You can double click it and edit the sketch for the revision cloud. That's all, all it is really, it's just a sketch. 
Uh, and if you, I mean, I'm assuming most people are aware of what a revision cloud does, but if you're not, the idea is that it's highlighting an area of the drawing that's changed. So if a drawing goes from revision A to revision B, on the revision B drawing, you'd, you'd circle with a cloud the area that's changed, just it highlights to people where that particular area is, makes it easier to see the changes. So that's the uh, revision cloud. That is the drawing tool though. That's all there is to it, nothing much more. Right, other things that we've got in here which are of use. We have, we have the color scheme editor. Let's let's just go down. Let's go the color scheme editor. Right, I shouldn't vent it down. I might have to do that. The color scheme editor is a little standalone application. So you go in here. You go into bin. You go into uh, this little icon here and double click him. You're going to get a warning saying that it's unsupported. Yada yada yada. Blah blah blah. Yakety schmackety. Click done. And it takes you into this. Right, on the left-hand side are your various different color schemes. So what you want to do is find out which color scheme you're using. By default, it is Winter Night. That is the one you use by default. And on the right-hand side, you've got all the different colors that Inventor will present to you. And the, you can change them all if you want to, but the ones that people are really most interested in changing are the sketching colors. So, for example, Full Constraint Curve and under constrained curve, right? All that means is your sketch line. So when you're doing a sketch, normal sketch lines, and once something can, is constrained, the full constrained curve color, green, and then that dark blue purpley color. So what you do is you click this, you click the big green square, and then you change it to something else. Now, before you do that though, before you do that, what I would recommend you do is save the way it is now. So click save, uh, no, you don't click save. You click backup, and then you click registry export. And then you export all of these settings out somewhere, and then if you do cock it up, you can just import it back in, which I'm going to preempt in another message to Mr. Waterdesk. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Right, well, I'll show you it anyway. This, this, in theory, this is what should happen. So you say, right, this is a, a backup of uh, the colors. Yeah. Right, so we've backed all that up. So that little file there should be everything here as it is now. So if I change it, I can re-import this and it'll change everything back to what it should be. So under constraint curve, what you do is you click the big green square and you change it. Say, I want red, I like red. So I want when I sketch in Inventor, I want it to be a red line. And then when things are fully constrained, I want it to be black, yeah? Then you click save, then you click save. So this is everything that applies to part mode and assembly mode. If you want to change anything for the drawing environment, you click the 2D documents button at the bottom and then you can change like, your, your sheet colors and bits and pieces like that. You, just, you can fiddle through, everything's pretty. I wouldn't say it's self-explanatory by any stretch. You can tell a program has written, written this global skill, auxiliary select, and you know a normal person of sound mind wouldn't have wrote uh, full constrained curve. They would have made it a bit more recognizable, but you know, dev speak and all that. So you shut that down, then you load up Inventor, and providing that you have changed the color scheme that you're using, which uh, it is winter night. It is winter night for me anyway. If uh, if you're not entirely sure, you just go to application options down here, and then go to colors, and it's whichever one you've got highlighted there. Anyway, click new, and we're gonna go to a part, and we're gonna check to see if this has worked. Has it changed my colors from green and blue to red and black? So I'm going to start a new part, and then we're going to create a new sketch. Sketch a doodle do red. Look at that. It's worked. It's worked right. And then fix, and then that goes black. Jolly good. Jolly good. So that has worked right. So resetting it back to the way it was. If you're thinking to yourself, ah, I don't quite like that. No, let's put it back to the way it was. The idea being is you go back into the utility, and then so we've got red and black. My phone's buzzing. Stop it immediately. Uh, under constraint curve and fully constrained curve. So the idea is you go to backup, registry import. A registry import, you click your registry file, you click open. Yada, yada, yada. Do you want to continue? Yes, I goddamn jolly well do. Okay, and then save. It's still red and it's still black. It hasn't worked. So be careful. Be careful. That might be a Windows 10 thing. I don't know, but at the moment it just ain't working for me. Everything is still as it was. So that's the color editor. Do with it what you want. Right, and the final one I want to show you is copy design. This one's actually really quite good. Copy design is sort of a throwback of uh, something Vault has. It's when you've got uh, an assembly in a bunch of parts and you want to create a complete duplicate 
a replica of your assembly and all the parts. Having to do a manual save as on everything is massively time consuming. You've got the uh, the design, uh, is it the design, it's not the design accelerator, it's not the task schedule, design assistant. You've got that, which uh, kind of does it, but it's really ball achingly awkward to use. So uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I've got a engineering data folder here, assemblies, and uh, let's say skizzes. So I've got an assembly here with a drawn and a bunch of parts. So my skizzes is made up of those three parts in that assembly, and I want to create a copy of it. I want to copy that design. So what you do is you go to your, uh, your express tools, which I've uh, just browsed away from in my infinite wisdom. So I'm going to have to browse back to them. You can tell I am, I am epically prepared in this video. If this is the first video you've ever seen of TFI card tips, the quality is usually marginally better. Marginally, I say. Right, copy design, bin. If you do use these on a regular basis, you could probably, I would imagine, create a shortcut. Like that, that works, there you go. You can create shortcuts so you don't have to keep browsing to this ridiculously long folder path. Right, so what you do is you go directory of the path containing the existing design. So you browse to this, and you browse to the the folder the parent folder of the uh, assembly you want to copy. Now, I'm not too sure how this works if you've got multiple, because you, what you can't do is pick the assembly. You pick the folder the assembly's in, which isn't brilliant, if I'm honest. Because what if you, I don't know what happens if you've got like 10 assemblies in there. I don't know how that works. But you say skizzers, that's the folder containing the assembly I want to copy. And the name of the new design is going to be new skizzers. And what it's going to do is prefix the new copy of the assembly with the word new skizzes. And you click OK. Done. Right, let's browse to it. I've browsed away from it again. Awesome. So we'll go to engineering data, assembly. So there's my new skizzes. And it's created a new skizzes assembly, two drones, and three parts. So if I now open up new skizzes assembly, uh, I shouldn't vent it down. That's how prepared I am today. I shouldn't vent it down. Just, uh, just to add few more seconds into the video because why not uh, I don't don't worry honestly I'm, I'm wishing this video ends as quick as you do <laughs> I'm just not having a good day right new skizzers I am there we go with three new parts underneath and there's your copied design I have no idea what it does with part numbers surely it gives you a new no it doesn't it hasn't put a new so you have to be careful with your part numbers it hasn't updated the part number to suit the new design, but uh, as long as you're aware that you need to then go and update part numbers, then uh, then you can do that. Uh, the the other one, which is I suppose sort of related, I've browsed away from the SDK folder again. Awesome, well done, Neil. You're having an absolutely superbly splendid day today. Inventor uh, SDK user tools uh, part number modifier is uh, is another one, which I think might only work with iParts. What you do is you pick your project. It will scan your project directory for, uh, I think, is it just going to work with it? just works with iParts. But what this does is it looks through iParts, and if you select uh, delete part number, it'll go away and blitz the part numbers completely out of uh, any iParts which are in your project, which is uh, it can be useful for things like duplicates and whatnot, but for normal parts and assemblies, it don't work. All right, I'm going to end it there because uh, I'm having an absolutely tragic day. And uh, if I carry on anymore, I fear I might make a complete tool of myself more than I already have done. So that's the Inventor SDK, a.k.a. Express Tools. If that was useful, do, do, do it's, I'm not even going to say like the video because this wasn't my finest hour. But uh, you, you're more than welcome to press like and subscribe. I, I Honestly, some of my other videos are much better than this one. <laughs> this, is, this one was absolutely awful. <laughs> All oh, right, anyway, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheerio, bye.